Friends, my name is Father Pandeleimon Papadopoulos. I am the priest here in Holy Resurrection, Brookville, New York. It's such a pleasure to be addressing all of you, and I thank the organizers for inviting me on. For those who know me, my life previous to becoming a priest was rather intense. I was the archdeacon at the Archdiocese for Archbishop Demetrius for 18 years. And then when Archbishop Elpidophorus of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese came, I spent another five months kind of in that transitional time and then was ordained and brought to Holy Resurrection Brookville. And it was for sure a very unique experience. I mean, I'm married, I have three children. I um, actually spent the last year of my seminary married to as a married student, as I came to the end of my studies at seminary, like is the case for so many of us who are entering, you know, the ministry or we have a calling to serve the church as a priest or in some capacity, um, it's inevitable that you have a sense of uncertainty. Um, sometimes things aren't quite adding up or your expectations are not being fulfilled to the degree that you thought they would be. And so at that time, there was uh, a conversation which my wife and I had, uh, and we were thinking about going to Greece to study. And we had made arrangements that probably within about a month after graduation, my life would be off to Greece. And then about two weeks before graduation, the funniest thing, I, I, I get a call out of nowhere by the then archdeacon, and he said to me, have you ever thought about ordination. Of course I did. Have you ever thought about serving at the archdiocese in the in the office of the archbishop? And I was completely caught off guard. Like it never crossed my mind that I'm just a boy from Connecticut being in the in the highest kind of position being in the office of the archbishop. Uh, I told him, I remember I, I, I need to speak to my wife. You know, I said, is this is this a directive? Is it an invitation? Is it what? He said, you take it any way you want. So at that point, I, I spoke to my spouse, uh, Georgia, Presidera Georgia, and we said, when the church calls, you have to respond. You know, God is calling us to serve. We got to serve. I, I didn't know anything about what I was getting into. My, my experience of like the national perspective of the church was minimal if not zero, confined to my local parish. So there was a lot of things that were, that I was feeling. And certainly in those early months of ministry, there was a tremendous feeling of inadequacy. You know, a slingshot right into the fast lane. Exactly six days after I was ordained, we had a funeral with 52 priests, seven bishops, and two archbishops. And I was clueless. I was in a sweat. So, as you enter the ministry, now I'm a deacon, I'm trying to pray. And that wasn't easy. You're, you're overwhelmed with the stress of not making a mistake on the big stage, if you will. And then at the same time, you see your own kind of spiritual life being bent out of shape. You know, it's not, you don't have really time to pray at a liturgy. You need to be thinking 10 steps ahead. I wanna remain grounded in my ministry. How do you remain grounded as a priest? You never lose sight of Christ. I like to use this example that was told to me by one of the very special people who live on Mount Tassos. This monk was telling me that when I get the young monks, I always make them make me coffee as a first kind of step. And they make the Greek coffee, right? And the Greek coffee, for those who know, you get the little copper um, vessel and you know you put it on the heat and all of you who have made Greek coffee have seen it. If you take your eye off that little copper uh, thing, immediately the, 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 the coffee spills over. So the idea, he says, that I always tell the monks is keep your eye on the briki. It's called briki in Greek. Don't, the moment you move your eye off the briki, you're going to lose and everything's going to spill over. I think it's so critical 
for us clergy and those who aspire, and I would say even for every Christian, don't ever lose sight of the Briki. Even in the story, all of you know, I'm sure, of uh, St. Peter, you know, the storm, Christ comes walking by, you know, he sends them out into the middle of this lake, and, and Christ sent them out. And Christ knew that the storm would come, right? It's a, he knew that it would happen. And he knew that they would be scared. And he knew that he would come walking. And he knew that Peter would call out to him. And he told him to come. And as soon as, and as, soon as he started sinking, you see, he calls out and the Lord says to him, Oh, of little faith, why did you doubt me? Uh, you saw that I know everything. You saw the miracles that I do. You saw that even in the center of a very bad storm, I can lift you out. And it's when we bring, um, it's when we bring Christ onto our boat, you know, in the storms that our ministry we may suffer in, you know, a slander, a backstab, an undercut, the jealousy of our brother clergy. We're human too. When when we when we try to deal with those storms we're going to drown. When we bring Christ onto the ship of our hearts, when we don't lose sight of the briki, you know, that's when the storms are manageable. That's when, when Christ is holding our arm and saying, oh, you little faith. And I don't think the statement to, to Peter was to hurt him. It was a statement of, Peter, oh, little of faith, what's the matter with you? You don't know who I am yet? Like, it had, I feel, a tenderness to it almost. But don't doubt me, I'm here. You know that I'm here. You know that I would never um, kind of abandon you. Now, the reality for me was uh, I had moments of being bent and pressed. And also, for those of you who may be thinking of marriage or are married in the ministry, there's that dimension too. You will hear many priests say, including myself, your family has to be in good order, number one. Now, it doesn't mean that I go on a five-day vacation with my wife. That's not the order. That's a worldly way of thinking of my house being in order. My house is in order when Christ, again, on the platform of my boat now is in the center of my home. So it's making sure that your wife, your spouse, is also has Christ in her eye on the briki, her, her Christ on the platform of her life. And therefore it can be a five minute conversation where everything is reset, you know, everything is synchronized and then off we go. And there is this kind of pendulum, um, you know, we have moments of grace where we feel it in our priesthood when we're on fire, prayer is flowing, you know, ministries are rocking, uh, you know, I'm focused, you know, I got all of my temptations in check. And then there's moments where the barrage is unbearable and the, you know, you're not, you're, you're mechanical, you're not feeling it. It's, 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 ugh, it's pushing yourself to do things, you know. One has to look at themselves in those moments of where their prayer life is and how much their eye is on the briki. I think Christ will bless the effort more than the result, so to speak. If he sees you trying and he sees that you're in the middle of the storm, there's no way in heaven that he's going to let you sit there and be overcome. When we have our down moments, even Christ, when he was walking his path to Golgotha, fell and needed help. And Simon of Serene stepped up to help carry his cross you know we're going to have moments of weakness we're going to have moments of uncertainty moments of a down curve it's okay it's natural it's very real in the life of a priest it's at those moments where we need help and we should call out for help to God and God will send people it's impossible a saint said that when you call out to God for help that he will be deaf to your help he'll send a person a message a Bible passage you're going to read that's going to change your whole, you know, is going to lift you out of the clouds, whatever the case may be. I remember once reading a story about a, a, a priest who went to confession to a, a brother priest. And, you know, he said, 
Father, I need to tell you, I feel a little bit um, embarrassed, but I have to say that, you know, he says, tell me. He says, ah, I've been going through all the motions, my liturgies, my vespers, my prayer life, my personal life. It's all mechanical. I, I'm not feeling any anything for God, you know. He says, the other priest says to him, how long you been feeling that? He says, ah, oh, it's been like eight months, but then, you know, I, and he says, the priest tapped him and said, take heart, brother. I've been feeling that for seven years. The reality is we have made a responsible decision in our lives to be followers of Christ. And that means that things won't always be rosy. And that means that we may not always be feel, feeling it, but our love for Christ is not based on feeling. It's a based on the conviction that we know He is our Lord and that He has defeated death by death forever and that as He said, those who believe in Me, the works that I did, they will do an even greater and that He said to us that the one who believes in Me, though he dies, shall live forever. So we have given our lives to follow that man and it is my prayer and hope that um, as you continue to do your studies, as you continue to search for God, as you continue to go through life, you know, dealing with whatever the Lord allows to intercept our lives, whatever challenges and failures and flops, whatever that is, I pray that you don't lose sight of the briki, that you don't lose sight of Christ, that you hold on to Him, that you return to Him at every moment of your life where you have need, and that you're not scared to ask for help when things are not adding up. May God bless you and keep you, and may the good Lord always enrich and deepen your spiritual lives, your lives in Him, and may He give you all His blessings all the days of your life to you and for those who have spouses, to your spouses, to your children, to your household, to your families, and may we continue on this journey, this lifelong journey, always seeking to follow in His footsteps and to be in Him and to give Him everything of who we are. With all of His blessings, I also extend my blessings and hope and pray that something of what I may have said may have been in some way um, constructive and helpful. God bless and keep you. Thank mm -hmm. you.